How can I make sure that my vendors and others don't email me sensitive financial information? Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you're asking. It happens, it happens with frequency. And we're gonna go over first, what is sensitive financial information? And then I'm going to directly answer your question. How do I stop other people from doing it? Because by the time it's in your inbox, it's too late, right? No, don't send me that credit card information. Oh, now I have credit card information in my inbox. It doesn't matter that I rush to the delete button. David, among other things, is very skilled in backend IT and IT security. And one of the things that he taught me is even if you think it's gone, it's really not gone to somebody with the skill set. David says, give them a place to send sensitive information. Thank you so much. It's excellent. And we'll go over what some of those places could be um, while we answer this question live. Thank you. So what, what do we call sensitive financial information? You already heard one example, credit card numbers, sensitive financial information. Don't send those over email account numbers, routing numbers, bank routing numbers are available online. But to have the account and routing number together in the single email is not something that I would do. And no, I'm not, I'm also not suggesting that it's okay to email an account number and separately email a routing number. Keep that kind of bank information out of emails altogether. I also oh, don't email social security numbers. If you're not for profit, then in my opinion, it's perfectly fine to email your tax ID because it's available publicly anyhow. Um, online. However, if you are a for-profit company, as far as I know, that information is not available freely and publicly online, I wouldn't email it. Um, your tax ID, among other things, is part of what banks use to verify that you are who you say you are, and you call, call them up and make requests. So don't email your tax ID. Um, what other information? Social security numbers, we do credit card, account and routing number. So the, that account and routing number, that extends to not only your company, but the account and routing number of other organizations that you serve, debit card numbers as well. Um, I, I would not do that. Furthermore, I wouldn't even break it up into multiple emails. Well, the pins over here, the first four digits of the credit card number in this email, don't do it. So let's talk um, again, let's talk next about what ways are okay, because that's going to dovetail directly into the straight answer, which is how do I get others, how do I prevent them from sending me sensitive information? The principle is you reach out, you communicate first, and you give them an alternative. Anybody from behavior modification uh, with behavior modification training will tell you it's not enough to, um, it, it's not enough to tell somebody not to do something. You have to provide a replacement behavior or live the wild card of what they might choose. And what they might choose, human nature says, is to continue the old behavior, even though you said stop. So either you're gonna have to live with the replacement that they choose or give them an alternative. So some alternatives um, include, uh, as David said, give them a place to send sens sensitive information. There's technology available, Box, Dropbox, SharePoint, ShareFile. If you send, if you deal with a lot of sensitive financial information, it's worth it to invest in a service like ShareFile and of course communicate proactively. If they can upload it to a secure place that you can download it from, that's fine. And even if, even if you uh, are emailed a link to that information, that's fine because from a hacker's perspective, um, they're not necessarily looking at individual emails with links to click on. There's some backend stuff that I don't remember the details for. David explained it to me once. Um, but sending attachments, even if they're password protected, is so super hackable, it's ridiculous. A client needed me to get into an Excel file, which was password protected and she didn't know the password. I went to YouTube and I looked up some VBA code for how to unlock the file anyhow. Sending, so sending an email with a password protected attachment is not secure enough for sending financial information. Um, so those are some great alternatives. Then the next step is to reach out proactively. Oh, and you know what? Here I am talking about technology. Pick up the phone, pick up the phone and say, I'm going to call you and ask you for your credit card information, right? Or call me, don't email me with your credit card information. Call me, don't email me with your social security number. Or 
I'm going to, if, if it requires a document like a W-9, use one of these secure portals, uh, such as Sharefile, Box, Dropbox if you need to, um, Google Drive if you're really, Google Drive isn't as, as secure as the others, but it's still better than emailing. Um, but Sharefile, man, that's the best. So how do I engage in these communications? You reach out proactively, especially if, uh, if you have a new relationship, then it's always the most convenient time to reach out and say, hey, we're setting up the relationship. I just, let's, let's take two minutes and go over sensitive financial information. And if you don't wanna have this conversation, have your accountant do it. And if you don't have an accountant who will have this conversation, call me because that's what we do for our clients. Uh, we provide, you know, the way that our clients ecosystem interacts with them is absolutely in a financially secure way. So, uh, and that's because among other things, we have those conversations that a lot of people don't think to have or don't know how to have. Um, so yeah, we, we call up people and say, would you please? Now, if they already did, take a stand. Because if they did it once, they're gonna do it again. And I, I did it twice last week uh, with people who really surprised me that they sent um, sensitive information over email. Their justification was, well, the client asked for it. You sent it. <laughs> you should have picked up the phone and given that information to them over the phone, or you should have uploaded it to the Dropbox account that you both share. Just because they asked for it and they used email as a conduit to ask for it does not mean that you had to email them back with the sensitive financial information. So I sent out a note and I said, please don't, I didn't do the blame and make wrong. I said, please, do not in the future email sensitive financial information, including but not, not limited to X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Please instead, right, you provide a replacement behavior. Please instead pick up the phone and call or use your shared Dropbox account, etc. And then here's the linchpin, because I, this has to be answered. And I use this technique to have someone else create in language a commitment. And that is, can I count on you? This was really successful. Can I count on you to use one of these secure methods in the future? And every time I get a yes response, there's no blame, there's no you did this and na na na. It's a request and then a replacement behavior and then can I count on you? So that's my triage technique for if somebody already blew it. But in general, it's okay to be proactive. Reach out when there's a new relationship and say, talk, sharing financial, sensitive financial information is important to us. Here are these um, channels that we can use. I'm going to invite you, and this is the type of stuff that we want in there.